Hello, I'm Dr. Katherine Leslie of Kent State University. I'm very happy to present further considerations about sustainable development in the classroom. My university is located in the U.S. state of Ohio. Kent is a college town with Cleveland being the nearest big city. Although Ohio is considered the Midwest, my institution is much closer to the East Coast, approximately 450 miles from New York City and 2,500 miles from Los Angeles. Kent State is a public Re Carnegie One research university that was founded in 1910. It's the third largest university in Ohio with 34,000 students in, the eight, in an eight campus system. I teach at the main campus on a 1,000 acre picturesque setting. Of the over 300 degree programs offered at Kent State, the School of Fashion has a Bachelor of Science in Fashion Merchandising, Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Fine Arts in Fashion Design, a Fashion Media Minor, and a unique graduate program, the Masters of Fashion Industry Studies. We are housed in a state-of-the-art building in a prominent location. When I arrived at Kent State in the fall of 2002, there were 400 students majoring in fashion. Due to a number of factors, including the Ohio Board of Regents naming my school an Ohio Center of Excellence in Cultural and Societal Transformation in 2011, our enrollment and rankings substantially grew. This graphic shows that by 2012, we had close to 1,400 majors, reaching a high of 1,800 in 2016-17. In line with post-pandemic trends, as well as a reduction in college-age population, we've leveled off at about 1,500, still a high enrollment that supports sustainability of the academic unit. One of the major reasons for the growth and sustainability of our school is the extensive study away options we offer. Fashion majors at Kent State are required to participate in an off-campus experience ranging from short-term to semester in the U.S. and around the world. It is through the Hong Kong Polytech University Exchange Program that I met conference co-principal inve investigator Dr. Eve Noa Ogu Chan Min Hin as an undergraduate student. As Eve's teacher all those years ago, it's a great honor to now be scholarly colleagues. The UN defined sustainability in 1987 as meeting the needs of the present without comp compromising the ability of future generation to meet their own needs. When Dr. Chan presented me with the idea for this presentation, uh, she asked to frame it around to promote research excellence and vocational skills in fashion-related industries while increasing the awareness of sustainability at multiple levels of the supply chain, also enhancing the visibility and impact of sustainability and su sustainable development goals of the United Nations to the general public. I'll move now into a discussion of sustainable development in my classes and classrooms at Kent State University. At Kent State, I've had the opportunity and responsibility to develop, develop and deliver 25 different courses, including graduate and honor sections. The majority of these were large lecture, our large lecture, with between 100 and 300 students. Over the course of more than 20 years, I've had the privilege of teaching more than 10,000 young people. It is through this experience that I've come to view sustainability in teaching 
through a lens of past, present, and future. To give students a sense of building on the past, connecting it with their present, and instilling the idea that this process, the process of learning, will continue into the future. I seek to make strong connections by giving students voices and choices, linking educational experience to their own individual and collective identity. I will outline three assignments that have shown success in making these linkages to the past, present, and future. They include the student contribution slide in History of Costume, tapping the Zeitgeist assignment in the Fashion Forecasting site, sorry, forecasting course, and career advice letter in the Professional Seminar course. We'll start with the History of Costume. This is a required course for fashion design majors and an elective for fashion merchandising majors. With approximately 150 students enrolled each spring and 25 in the summer. This is a survey that covers 5,000 years in 15 weeks. These are the course objectives. The scope of this course is not costume and culture or popular culture. It's focused on the history of Western dress from prehistoric times till the year 2000. I sometimes joke, don't blink, you'll miss the Middle Ages. With the increased attention toward issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion, it became clear that there was a need to increase visibility of topics and peoples that could connect with an increasingly multicultural student population. The challenge was that the course objectives are already packed with one class session for 26 different topics, as you see in this list today. The first step was to recognize the issue and to replace and integrate examples with more diverse peoples wearing fashionable dress. I'm very grateful to my advisee and Hong Kong native, Yi Lin Elaine Yoon, who uncovered the correlation between the kimono and the bustle dress. It is knowledge such as this that enriches all of our understanding. Identifying and integrating a wider range of individuals wearing fashionable dress and course materials was a good first step, but there still seemed to be more that could be done to meet interests and expectations of today's students. The solution was to give students the opportunity to contribute to the course without adding more to the required content that was covered in the textbook and on quizzes and exams. The vehicle is an extra credit assignment, worth the same amount of points as one of the 25 textbook quizzes. It's optional and available to all students at the end of the semester. Approximately one third of the students participate each time this course is offered. And these are some examples. This is the optional assignment itself. Only those students who want to participate will have their ideas integrated into class PowerPoints for coming semesters. The slides are captioned student contribution and the term. They are shown briefly in lectures and students can read deeper on their own through the posted PowerPoints on the class website. The student's will, uh, assignment is to create a slide uh, that includes five examples or bullets and that could uh, be put in one of the sections of the course. The following are some examples of student slides that were submitted in the summer 2023. Drag during the Renaissance. Persia and Paisley.
gendered clothing for children. Japan saves American ivy. And 1990s Chola style. These are some other examples. Uh, the benefits, students feel their viewpoints and topics are visible and recognized. As an instructor, I became aware of in ideas that are relevant to students. After each term, I conduct an analysis, and when I see multiple slides that have been submitted on a topic, then I integrate that topic more deeply into the mainstream course materials. Some examples of gaps that have, been, uh, have emerged in this process are Harajuku fashion, and drag culture. The second course that I'll spotlight today is fashion forecasting. Fashion forecasting is a required course for fashion merchandising majors and fashion media minors with a, between 100 and 125 students enrolled each semester. It covers the theory and process of trend forecasting as it's used in the fashion industry. These are the course learning outcomes for the third year students who are learning to apply their knowledge through an industry focused project. So not only do they understand the process, but they apply it to their own individualized project. In this course, students are introduced to the process of creating a fashion forecast. They complete a series of assignments and activities learning each step and then producing it for a brand of their choice. After receiving instructor and peer feedback, the nine assignments are revised and packaged into the final forecast with an executive summary and a recommendation justification for their brand at the end of the semester. The first lesson in the forecasting course introduced the German word, the concept of zeitgeist, or the spirit of the time. Students learn that effective forecasts touch elements and attitudes that customers are feeling, which are reflected in their desire for fashion goods. This zeitgeist assignment provided an opportunity to connect the concept with the student's perspective to help to ground their forecast in research and connect this research with their individual and collective thoughts. The first activity and assignment is called tapping into the zeitgeist. It begins with a definition and rationale about why this is important. The zeitgeist is the defining spirit or mood of a particular period of history as shown by the ideas and beliefs of the time. And for fashion forecasting, trends are tapping into the zeitgeist, a reflection of what's going on around us. There are two steps to this activity. First, the students list five words or phrases that they think describe each individual decides which ones they think describe or characterize the zeitgeist of our time. In the second step, the students second or like three words that their classmates have posted on the discussion board. This creates a list of words with frequencies. The result is a series of posts with lists of words and classmates' words that each student seconded. With about 100 students enrolled each term, there are approximately 800 words. The words are downloaded from the discussion board into a Word document. They are isolated if there was other text included. For example, here are my words would be deleted. No other changes are made other than to make all the words lowercase and to add an underscore to connect words and phrases, such as in this example, 
artificial intelligence has an underscore to link those two words. The list of words are copied and pasted into an online word cloud generator. Uh, the one that I use is www.wordclouds.com. The most frequent words appear the largest. There are many options for the shape and color of the word cloud. The following are zeitgeist word clouds created by Kent State fashion forecasting students over the past five semesters. I began this assignment in late January 2021 when we were 100% online teaching and learning, and uh, it was prior to the vaccine for COVID-19 being uh, uh, widely available in the U.S. Students are, show that they're hope and hopeful. They see change. They seek sustainability, but also uncertainty um, and home and self-care comfort. That fall, my class still was 100% online that August of 2021. Pandemic is one of the largest words along with comfort, yet activism, adaptable, innovative, individualism, environmental, and hope and change along with uncertainty. In the spring of 2022, my class returned to full-time in-person. Students were uh, excited, at yet anxious, confident, but saw new beginnings, yet, and hopeful continues, uncertainty, overwhelmed, change and comfort. That fall, last fall, Sustainability once again returned as a large word on the word cloud. Activism and divided, inclusivity, compassion, optimistic, overwhelmed, chaos. Some of the words are the change, are the same, and other new words emerge. This past semester in January, sustainability and sustainable are large words in the word cloud made by the students. Hopeful, virtual, growth, healing, change, individuality, overwhelming, and comfort. The visual, these visualizations of Zeitgeist word cloud from the class show from the class show the spirit of the time according to students enrolled. In the uh, future considerations would be to make the uh, word clouds all the same shape and the same colors for longitudinal study. Um, and because I don't change the words in any way, um, the words like sustainable and sustainability uh, would be larger if the the end of those words were changed. So that's a consideration. Um, reviewing, the, uh, reviewing this shows differences, uh, similarities and differences over time and reveals such short long-term trends as sustainability and hope. Short-term trends emerging such as nostalgia this spring provide insights. Students are uh, then as they begin their own individual projects and assignments, are asked to select three to five of the notable words to ground their forecast, essentially linking their own contribution to the process of forecasting for their company. Here are some examples of segments of student forecasts. The descriptions relate to the words in the zeitgeist, uh, word cloud from the class, including comfort, individuality, sustainability, innovation, and self-care. Student voices inform the learning experience in this course, connecting the material more closely with their individual and collective perspectives. 
The third class that I'm outlining today is Professional Seminar. This is a required course for fashion merchandising majors and an elective for fashion design majors, with approximately 100 students enrolled each fall, spring, and about 25 in the summer. It's the prerequisite for our required internship course. These are the course learning objective for third year students who are gaining skills in career development, planning, and interviewing. One of the most important concepts and exercises in this course is networking. To instill in students the importance of building their professional network. This is most frequently met with some resistance as students do, know, do not know how to begin to build their network. The career advice letter assignment gives them a process and a script to use. LinkedIn is the world's largest professional network on the internet. At the start of the semester, students are encouraged to set up their LinkedIn profile and link with myself, two other professors, three peers, and three individuals who they know from part-time jobs, family, friends, or neighbors. Because of my years of teaching and the number of students I've had, my LinkedIn connections are close to 5,500 individuals that I can share with my students. After going through the process of identifying their interests, skills, and potential positions in the fashion industry, students are instructed to prepare and send an email letter to begin to create their network. Not only are they building their connections, but they gain advice from successful individuals in their chosen field. As an educator, I understand the fashion concepts and the supply chain but the most current career information is in the direct experience of industry professionals. So the first step in the career advice letter is for the students to uh, create a list. LinkedIn has various filters, including name, job, company, and locations. Students can search um, the LinkedIn network or if they want to more closely narrow, they, once they link with me, they can search in accordance with their own personal and professional attributes amongst my network. Once the students have developed a potential networking list, they compose their communication, starting with their sound, sound bite, elevator, or 60 second introduction speech. This is a short, uh, to the point of who they are and what they're seeking. Then the career advice letter includes at least four questions. The one that's required is the most important, seeking advice for action. What can I do now to prepare myself for a career like yours? In addition to that key question, here are some examples of the script that students or any job seeker can use. They are not asking for a job or internship, but for advice. My students find that people are willing to provide advice, especially alumni of our program. This has led to mentorship relationships and career opportunities. Students find this process productive. They can send three or five letters in one week and then some more the following week. Eventually they'll gain responses and start to see what I call the thread of truth that they can put into action. For example, if they hear over more than once, a few times, that professionals saying they need to have expertise in Excel or have a strong foundation in fabrics or pattern making, then they know what steps to take. I tell the students that someday they'll be a professional and they can answer the questions for a student following in their shoes. This gives them the opportunity to imagine themselves 
in the next stage of their career. After a number of years, I'm finding that this is working out quite well, paying forward and bringing young people into the industry in a positive, productive, and sustainable way. I greatly appreciate your attention as I shared a few ideas about how I approach and facilitate sustainability in my classroom. I see my vocation as a professional educator, a champion of lifelong learning, meeting the needs of the present and enhancing the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. I welcome any questions or conversation going forward. Thank you.